then God will never give you more than you can handle. You ever heard that one? God's never gonna give you more than you can handle. You heard that? It, right, it, it happens, right? You're going through a hard time and some well-intended, some nice person, right, who's trying to be encouraging and they have a sincere desire, they'll, they'll say that to you, right? God will never give you more than you can handle. Now, where does that come from? I mean, because it sounds encouraging, right? It even almost sounds biblical. Where does it come from? I, I think it comes from words that the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, but, but look, look what Paul wrote. Here's what he wrote. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. So if you're a follower of Jesus, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. Look what he says. If you're a follower of Jesus, he says, God is faithful. God will not allow you to be tempted more than you can stand. When you are tempted, Paul says, God will show you a way out of that temptation so that you can endure. Right, so what, what does he say? Paul's writing to the church. He, he's talking specifically what? About the idea of what? Temptation. He's, this, is, this is the idea of temptation to sin, temptation to do wrong, temptation to hurt. In fact, if you study the entire context of this, and some of you should read this later today, you will see that Paul is concerned with the church at Corinth, with the believers at Corinth. He's trying to help them resist sinful enticements, not to follow in the footsteps of, uh, of Israel in the Old Testament. But 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it's not God will never give you more than you can handle. That's not what he says. This is not the same as saying that God protects you from circumstances that overload your emotional, mental, and financial capacities. If you read it, Paul is talking to believers. This is not no pain, no stress, no pressure, no suffering. That's not what Paul says. In fact, I believe that followers of Jesus can be, and maybe we should say it this way, will be tested beyond their ability to function and problem solve. See, I believe that God allows circumstances to take us beyond our mental and emotional limits. That things happen to you and me that are too big for us to handle. That we will be overwhelmed a lot by life. That we will fall and to uh, depression and that we can have nervous breakdowns and we can become paralyzed not knowing what to do. See, I believe this to be true because I've seen it throughout my ministry. I've walked with brothers and sisters through the death of a child. I've walked with brothers and sisters through mental illness, through incurable diagnosis, through collapsing marriages and financial ruin again and again. People come to the end of their capacities I also believe this to be true because, again, the words of the Apostle Paul, a page or two over in Corinthians, what he wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Look what Paul wrote. He says, we think you ought to know, brothers and sisters. Hey, if you're a follower of Jesus, you should know this. You should know about the trouble that we went through in the province of Asia. Of Asia. Look what Paul says. We were crushed and overwhelmed. How? Beyond our ability to endure. And we, we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. They don't teach that in kids' church. This doesn't line up with the prosperity gospel. This is not what the Christianity looks like in the West. This is something else. This is something more, this is something deeper. The same Apostle Paul who said that God would not allow us to be tempted beyond our ability also said that he despaired of life and was burdened beyond his strength. I mean, if such a great man of faith, if, if a man of such faith and endurance as the Apostle Paul could despair and find himself beyond his limits, then sure, certainly we could as well. But why? I mean, why does God allow this? Why does God allow you and me to be burdened beyond our strength? Paul actually answers it in the text. 2 Corinthians 1.9. What was the result of all of this, Paul? Paul said this. We stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. We stopped relying on ourselves. And we learn to rely only on God who raises the dead. See, don't miss this. See, God will give you more than you can handle. If you are a follower of Jesus, God will give you more than you can handle, but he will not give you more than he can handle. He'll give you more than you can handle. 
but he will never give you more than he can handle. See, sometimes Jesus brings us to the end of ourselves so that we have no other option but to throw ourselves on him in complete and utter dependence. See, Jesus loves you so much that he's willing to strip away all the comforts and the supports so that you will find him to be your only rock, to be your only anchor, to be your only treasure. See, God brings us to places of weakness and suffering and inability so that we can hear the words that Paul heard. My grace is enough. My power is made perfect in your weakness. 